Training camp, a time for National Hockey League teams to come together, to bond, to learn, a time to work out the kinks, a time to prepare for what will be a lengthy sojourn into the unknown of another wild ride in pursuit of the sports holy grail. For the Philadelphia Flyers, though, this training camp will mean a lot more. This training camp needs to show the difference between last year's failure and this year's recovery. For if it doesn't, the ride into the future may have to make a sudden stop. This is that story. This is the Flyers' flight plan. With the start of each new season, hope springs eternal for each of the 30-member clubs of the National Hockey League. For the Philadelphia Flyers, though, after a season missing the playoffs, it's not the cross your fingers and close your eyes kind of hope, but rather the last year was unacceptable, now fix it brand. Those expectations permeated throughout training camp as the practice level was definitely hyped. Maybe more so for players like Braden Shen, who has something to prove in this, his third full season. Well, I think you always have something to prove. You know, uh, you always want to get better. You always want to improve and, and, sh and uh, you know, sh show people, uh, you know, how good you can be here. I try and prove people wrong, and um, you know, I think for me, uh, I got a lot to prove this year. And like I said, it's the third year in the league for me, and, and uh, you know, I expect a lot out of myself. Well, the first year I was here, I played a little bit of uh, left wing uh, with Danny Breer, and last year was more center. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of adjustment, but um, you know, I, I got to do whatever it takes to, to help this team win hockey games. And if you're going to get a chance to play with, you know, a guy like uh, Vinny LeCavier or or one of those guys, uh, you know, you got to take full advantage of the opportunity, and that's what I'm looking to do. Yep. Oh, what a play! Wow, guys, don't let that. Uh, well, in the offseason, you always want to, you know, make adjustments and, and tweak your game or uh, get stronger, faster in the gym. And you know, I felt I've done that. You don't have another stick? Oh, that sucks. You know, I feel uh, uh, stronger and quicker on the ice, and um, you know, I, th I think a big thing is just uh, you know having a lot of confidence. I'm Braden. Brandon. Nice to meet you. I'm not ready to I stick you in the game. Oh, you did? Sorry about that. Oh no, it's all good. We missed new stick. Well, I've got two D on the blue line here, one line up here. We'll call a breakout. Let you know what it is. D. When you start the blue line, I want you to skate backwards to get to the top of the circle and then pivot, go back and get the puck. Nope. Oh. That is disgusting. How do you even wear that? Dirty. Fast cross, yeah. Definitely expectation levels have been raised. Uh, you know, obviously making a few uh, tweaks uh, in the system and you know the intensity's been there all throughout training camp and in Lake Placid and all that. Guys are uh, you know hungry and I want to get the season going. So said this is Christmas morning. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Look at the detail on this thing. It's phenomenal. <laughs> You can only tell so much from pictures, right? I, this I, is I know, and when it's clear coated and stuff, you just yeah, shines with the too, and yeah. The smoke and try to keep like that eerie, no, definitely eerie feel to I it. I like how you made this more to yeah. kind of suit the whole team. Right? Yeah, all kind of tattered up because I was thinking, you know, it'd be really neat to do like the old school Broad Street right. always patch. Yeah, definitely. To kind of no, this thing is phenomenal. My God, that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> Honestly, man, I cannot thank you enough. Ah, yeah. that's phenomenal. My pleasure, man. Can't wait to wear it. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Thank you. I'll take that off of you. <laughs> <laughs>
It is a time for somebody to open eyes and force the organization's brass to take note and reconsider their expected roster. Several players were given extended opportunities to win one of those jobs. And one of them was little-known Austrian Michael Raffel, who at age 24 signed a free agent contract with the Flyers after six seasons playing in Sweden. I really liked this organization because they seemed really interested to getting me over here. And I mean, it's a, it's a great organization with a lot of history. And I grew up like watching the Flyers and all their, their top players. And even over the last couple of years, I was somehow cheering for the Flyers. So, so it was a pretty nice, nice offer and I took it right away. I mean, the biggest difference was, I think, that it was 60 guys here at this camp. I've never seen or done anything like that. Um, in, in Europe, it's kind of like 25 players and the team is already set, so it was pretty tough to, to get through there. But I mean, it's a good experience and it was somehow fun. Raffle looked good in his first game with the Flyers in preseason, playing alongside Vincent LeCavalier and Wayne Simmons. But adapting to the smaller ice proved to be tougher than everyone thought it would for him. I mean, I used to play in Austria and then in Sweden. I think you have the puck a little longer there, a little bit more time with the puck. The, the smaller ice here makes it more difficult to have puck possession. I think you pass it faster, you chip it and you play the body. I mean, it's every, every kid's dream to, to play in the NHL someday. So it w would mean a lot to me and I know it would mean a lot to to people back home in Austria, you know, we don't have so many Austrian players playing over here, so it would be great, it would be awesome. Unfortunately for Raffle, he wasn't deemed ready to make the adjustment to the North American game and was sent down to the Adirondack Phantoms, the Flyers' AHL affiliate, for more seasoning. Training camp can get tedious at times, so the Flyers took a couple breaks from the intense day-to-day -day training. Coach LaViolette took the team on a four-day hockey retreat to Lake Placid, and the team also took an afternoon to meet the fans at Xfinity Live. Let's go Flyers! Across the parking lot at Xfinity Live, well, the true opening of the season tonight is the fans take advantage of Fan Fest, and they meet the 2013-14 Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, so nice of you. You do. Building my confidence for the interview. Look at his skin. He has great skin. We're gonna have a skin commercial. <laughs> yeah, that's not push it though. They're gonna announce the 2013 Meet Flyers, and then you're gonna, Chris is gonna take you to PBR. Yep. All of you guys, after they announce it, you guys are all gonna be lined up in the center. They're gonna take you back into here. Hang out. Who's taking them back here? Cool. <laughs> that camera out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, my hair? It's a little. It's a little. That's it. I'm not gonna mess you up. Get this hair done. <laughs> Let's go Flyers! Let's go Flyers! Let's go Flyers! I hate talking in front of people. I'm really nervous. Should we have to get them there? You gotta make me look good, and that's stupid. On, sat on the stage with Gila's. Yeah. 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 Oh boy, <laughs> I don't like that. He'll do great. Can we get in the back corner somewhere? We can like find a box or something for you to hide behind. That's what we're doing. Behind us. It's real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm stuck in my stomach right now. I hate talking in front of people. It's the worst. Well, 
opening night is uh, uh, it's always a, a great feeling and uh, playing for a new team, a uh, great franchise and uh, in a great building against Toronto. I'm really excited and uh, already have the chills. Uh, just that opening night when uh, the fans are all dressed up in orange and, and loud and uh, that's what gets you going. That's when you know the season's here. So I'm really excited and I can't wait to, you know, to uh, put that uh, flyer jersey over and uh, go out there and uh, get the first win. The new season brought excitement, not just for the newest Flyers, but also for a fan base frenzied for a winning hockey team again. Did you drink a Coke today? Did you drink a Pepsi today? You did, eh? I don't do that. I don't do that. Hey, Hartsey. Hartsey, I want you there. Hey, any pucks around here, you take them, okay? That's the other way around, but. No, just for this one, because I, I know you can jump and get it. What? What do you mean? Didn't you have a, a knee or something? On oh, my hand. It was your hand? Yeah. I heard playing golf. Oh, yeah, yeah. F***ing pigeon! Don't go for my head, eh? No, I hit my head. All good, though. And everything started off well for the Flyers as Le Cavalier showed the moves that made him an elite player for so long as he set up Braden Shen for a goal. But from there, the next 100 hours would bring a steep decline. The Flyers would be unable to score again against Toronto and lose the opener 3-1. They would head to Montreal and be chased from the Bell Center 4-1 by a more competitive Canadiens team, and then finish the unwelcome trifecta with an uninspired 2-1 loss in Carolina. I would think that um, you guys probably are pretty frustrated. You know, and, uh, there's, not a, there's not a lot of room out there. We're not... Uh, it doesn't seem like we get them. The first game we had a lot of attempts, the last two games not a lot of attempts. Uh, um, obviously we're going to do a lot of video and I think we're not very happy with our game and it's got to change. And change it would. As on the flight home, general manager Paul Holmgren decided to find a new voice for the franchise.
On the next episode of Flight Plan, presented by Virtua, the Flyers call a press conference to announce a coaching change. Craig Berube takes over behind the bench, and the Flyers finally break through on home ice. Thank <laughs> you.